Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Ah, yeah, folks, welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show. It is Monday, December 31st, 2018. Yeah, New Year's Eve, how about that? And I am here with you live right now on the Grim Leftovers Show. And um, i got to see what we're going to do tonight. I, I, I tried to prepare some today, but I didn't really, I, I was, I, I got so distracted by so many other things. But that's okay. We're here. We're, we'll do, we'll do a show. Because uh, it's time for it, and I'm ready for it. And you're here. You're on reallibertymedia.com. Or maybe on rlmradio.xyz, or maybe on Freedoms Network, or, or Minds.com, or RealLiberty.org, or on our Tuned In sh- channel, or the Internet Radio channel, or on Spreaker. Yeah, we're on Spreaker too. So, um, uh, welcome to you wherever you may be, and uh, glad to have you here with us. So, uh, how the hell y'all doing? Y'all, y'all ready? Y'all ready for a, for a New Year's New Year's Eve? Ready to start the next year? You're gonna you're gonna be 2019ers coming up or anytime now soon? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I went out looking today. I went out searching for uh, various lists of, of like top stories of 2018. And you know, it's it it they just all it doesn't matter. I I, I looked at all all through all these various lists of people. Um, that I mean, that different sites had made for top stories of 2018. It's like, meh. I, I I don't really care about any of that. You you know the one thing that I I really uh, <laughs> did enjoy uh, out of 2018. The best thing for me from 2018 was the story about the front hole. <laughs> I'm gonna call 2018 the front hole year. <laughs> Because, and if you don't recall the story, and I, and I forget who put it out, I don't have a link to it offhand, but uh, uh, some group of people, it was, it was a doctor's group, I do believe, a medical a medical group uh, came, came out with the, uh, the story. But apparently, uh, using the word vagina is no longer politically correct. So, instead of calling it a vagina... They now want you to refer because that because that is not not inclusive, and and I'm not sure who it's not inclusive to, other than those that maybe don't have one, um, which means they wouldn't really need to refer to it um, as, as in regards to themselves. However, since vagina is no longer <laughs> inclusive, you should now refer to it as the front hall. And I tell you, that was my favorite thing through the whole, the whole year, the front hole. And uh, so 2018 will be the year of the front hole. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to love it. By the way, I, I, I do have my wire open if anybody wants to, to ring in on wire. Feel free. Um, if you're not on wire yet, just go ahead and go to wire.com and download it. And, and you can find me as at Grimnir. Uh, there and uh, and 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 make a request to uh, be on my list of people, and and I'll be glad to to take you in that way. So uh, wire's great; it's much better than Skype um, in many ways. It's, it's it's not the perfect app, but there is no perfect app out there. Anyway, um, so howdy to all the folks that are out there listening in the various spots. Uh, maybe if you're on Freedoms Network or or RealLiberty.org, which are are, are those are our two social networks. The two social networks that are directly related to, connected with, realliberty.media. Real, <laughs> reallibertymedia.com, not dot .media. reallibertymedia.com. Uh, so, yeah, those, those are our, our two social networks. And, and they're both small, but they're, they're both doing fine. And, and I like them both. Um, so, anyway. And, and if you're on reallibertymedia.com and you're here in the chat room... On uh, or the channel IRC channel on irc.freenode.net, then then you'll be here in this big list of folks that we got over here in the channel, 
and, and let me say hi and howdy to those that are here. We, we got Barman and Moose Girl and, and Kate and as Mo and Chalcedonian Circle and Chloe and Flash somebody. Uh, I think Flash is still awake. I'm not sure. It's kind of late for him. Anyway, we got Goober, Zilla, Miss Graham Z, you awake out there, Don C, Beaster Meisterbrow, Mr. Woody, uh, the Pox of, the Poxer group, the Poxifieds, Poxophones, Poxahomes, all those poxes. And we got Rain in the Fluke Bot. Hey, Fluke Bot. <laughs> Rob works with us this evening and Mr. Rome's at Vin E. Oh, yeah, we got the Phantom and Beetle. Beetle. Hey, Beetle. Uh, Captain Vinny. Captain Vinny. What are you captain of, Vinny? <laughs> and Cyborg Noodle and Dakota and Frumpy and Gromit and Java Doctor and JJ 999 JJ's. Kozu, Moe, Ninson, Dubois, uh, uh, Ponzas, yes, and the sock puppet himself. And of course, let's not forget the Skittle a bot. So, uh, hey, <laughs> that's, I think that's everybody. I, I was going to give you, and I'll give you the link to it, although at this point in time, it appears, uh, and I gave you this link a couple weeks ago on Freakers, but I'm going to give you the link again. Uh, just in case you want, I, I printed out my calendar yesterday, and you may want to print out a calendar for yourself. Uh, but apparently, it, it seems like the timeanddate.com website is um, overloaded, which is not really a surprise, uh, considering the fact that it's New Year's Eve and everybody's trying to see how many minutes they got left before they pop the champagne or blow their little noisemakers or whatever. But it's a great, it's a great way to um, uh, get a calendar with you know, all you're paying for is your your toner or ink and, and the paper uh, it doesn't cost you you know ninety five ninety dollars or whatever it costs for calendars these days uh, I don't I don't buy I haven't bought calendars for a long time but uh, that that's a, it makes a great calendar you print it out um, and, uh, and and you, and you stick it on your wall there and it uh, doesn't have a bunch of nonsense involved with it so uh, there you go there you go, timeanddate.com, calendar create. So uh, that, that'll that do you up, and, and you can have yourself a nice little calendar. Um, you're a pirate. Vinny, Captain Vinny is a pirate. Is a fucking pirate. <laughs> Beetle is tuned in. Oh, by the way, I, I, I want to mention this because... Um, I, I know y'all miss him because it's been so long since we've we've had him on the show. But uh, on Saturday, Solomon uh, gave me a, a little phone call, a short little phone call. And, uh, and so I talked to him, and, and he wanted to make sure that I sp spread the happy highs, happy hellos to all y'all here uh, that are that are in Real Liberty Media chat. Like Miss Moose, of course. Mr. Vin E. himself. Uh, yeah. And and, uh, and and everybody else, the Beetle and, and, and Sock Puppet and uh, Kate, of course, absolutely, Asmo and uh, everybody here. Graham Z, yes, absolutely, he she he loves your show. He listens to all the RLM shows still, and uh, we we miss Solomon as as a as a caller in on during the Freakers Ball, but that's all right. Um, it's good to know that he's out there and still doing well, and and that we miss him. And yes, we love Solomon, and Solomon loves us so um thank you for calling me by the way mr salomon <laughs> all right um you know um i i wasn't really sure I, you know i tried to find one of one of the things when i was searching today i tried to find a good list of the top 10 blues albums of the year and while I found some various people's blues albums lists, including Joe Bonamassa, he's done a couple of them, uh, but but none of them were really like here's the here's the best blues albums of the year. Um, so, eh, you know, whatever. Uh, that that's fine. That's fine. So anyway, I, I did come across this one uh, top ten national news stories of 2018 that I'll share with you. This is posted up on uh, Ohio.com. Uh, or the Akron Beacon Journal. Either way, it's from the Associated Press. Um, and, and, and so I just wanted to kind of share some of those with you. Uh, just, you know, it's the end of the year, and 
and and so whatever. Here 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 here's what it has to say for y'all. And there's so much propaganda built into this, and and I'll try and disseminate a little bit of it, uh, disperse some of it for you as I go along here. It says the mass shooting at Parkland, Florida High School, which killed 17 students and staff and sparked nationwide student-led marches for gun control was the top news story of 2018. Now, now the fact that it was a false flag event does not come into play as far as the AP is concerned. They, they're just going to tell it to you as the government would prefer them to do. Um, anyway, then it goes on to say, the number two story was the investigation by special counsel Robert Mueller into whether Donald Trump's election campaign coordinated with Russia. Again, who cares? I, you're calling that the number two story of the year, and it's like, really? I mean, did, was anybody actually paying attention to that crap? It, did, it just did, none of it mattered. None of it mattered. Not, not a bit of it. Um, it says a year ago, the surge of Me Too, hashtag Me Too, sexual misconduct allegations that toppled many powerful men. Did it? Uh, powerful men was voted to the top story of 2017. The continuing of momentum of the Me Too movement in 2018 was this year's number three story. Really? Well, I, I, I just I just don't. <laughs> I read these things. It's like, all right, let's go. Here's the 20, 2018's top ten stories in order. The Parkland Schools shooting. It happened on Valentine's Day. Now, you know, it seems to me, it seemed like to me, that it was further, that it was longer ago than that. But apparently it was just last February when this happened. Uh, when, when we started hearing about David Hogg and <laughs> the others there making idiots of themselves out there. And, and not only just that, making idiots of themselves, but, but that the media is selling it to you as if it was really important, as if this little ass clown really mattered. Anyway, it goes on to say, an act of senseless hate by a gunman with a semi-automatic rifle who killed 14 students and three staff members at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Again, this was a false flag event. This, this, this did not occur, as they said, in any way whatsoever. But they go on to say previous mass shootings had prompted passionate calls for tighter gun control laws, which of course they were already in a uh, quote, gun free zone, unquote. <laughs> but this time it was different. A group of student survivors at the school, soon joined by allies nationwide, launched the March for Our Lives movement, uh, funded by George Soros, um, that organized mass walkouts and peaceful protests at schools across the country. The movement remains active, really? I haven't heard anything about it in several months now, um, and has helped energize the broader campaign for tougher gun laws. So get rid of all you, you uh, what, what they like to call law-abiding folk. Your guns, get rid of all your guns, you people that aren't going to go out and shoot anybody or attack anybody or threaten anybody, coerce anybody with your weapons. Get rid of all your guns. Just let the those that mean to do you harm have guns. That That's the uh, theory behind the gun control laws. <laughs> Number two, the, the Trump-Russia probe. I, you know, I'm going to skip it because, really, I don't care. I, I couldn't care less about Trump. I couldn't care less whether he colluded with Russia. I couldn't care less about all of the people that have been indicted or convicted or fined or whatever under the name of the Trump-Russia probe. It's just meaningless. It's nonsense. And I am not going to talk about it. <laughs> Number three, 
the Me Too movement, uh, which uh, surfaced in late 2017, maintained its momentum throughout 2018. I don't, I don't really hear anything about that anymore either, other than people making fun of it. I, I don't I don't really hear anybody uh, doing any of the Me Too crap I, that, that apparently they uh, said that they took down many powerful men that were forced to account for their past past instances of sexual assault and misconduct. Uh, once revered a comedian, Bill Cosby, was sentenced to prison. So was Larry Nasser. I don't know who that is. The former Michigan State and USA Gymnastics sports director uh, convicted of molesting hundreds of young women. And, and why did it take this to, to get that to happen? Why, I, I, you know, if, if these people, I mean, obviously people knew that Bill Cosby was a disgusting human being and probable rapist. I don't know who this Larry Nasser guy is. I guess he's the, he's the coach that was convicted of molesting all these young girls. Um, and then Harvey Weinstein, who apparently um, is getting out of getting out of it anyway, uh, charged with rape. Les Moonves, who was the uh, CEO at CBS, uh, after dozens of women accused him of sexual misconduct. It's good that all these guys are being taken down. But but this whole this whole B two thing just seems ridiculous. Uh, whatever. Anyway, mass shootings was the number four story, and again another false flag here. Uh, when a Marine combat veteran shot dead twelve people at a country music bar in California in November, it was a grim, not again movement moment for, for many Americans. A grim moment. I always love that. I, I guess I like that, like 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 uh, Vincent likes when somebody says easily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Moose, I, I got it, I got it. The creepy doctor, the the, the gymnast perv. Uh, but but it's been going, you know that that stuff with the, with the gymnasts and the ice skaters and uh, any any of those sports, swimming too, I'm sure. Uh, floor floor routines. Uh, all that stuff. Those guys, that's been going on for decades. So, pointing out, okay, here's this one guy, blah, blah, blah. All right, whatever. Um, anyway, so so it says a Marine combat veteran shot dead 12 people at a country music bar in California. Uh, again, another false flag there. Um, the fifth mass shooting of the year, mass shooting, uh, the, 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 in the U.S., produced nationwide a shock and a sorrow. Did it really? Nationwide shock and sorrow. I, I would think most people are slightly immune to the to the shock and sorrow effect at this point in time. I I, I can't say that for sure. Everybody doesn't think the way I do. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, I I don't know. Anyway, it says, in May, two months after the Parkland shooting, false flag, eight students and two teachers were killed in a high school in Santa Fe, Texas. Now, that one could have been real. That could have been a real thing right there that happened in, in Santa Fe, in Texas. It's really hard to say. We didn't get a whole lot of information out of it. There was, there was, there was just such a minimal amount of information, but it seemed like there was an actual crazy guy involved in that one. Uh, in June, a gunman shot dead five employees at the Capital Gazette newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland. Do I remember that? I don't, I don't even know if I remember that. Did I hear about that one? I don't think I heard about that one. I, I probably heard about it, but it, it probably just breezed on by my brain and in one ear and out the other, the, those uh, Capital Gazette people. I probably talked about it on that day, and, and then it just totally, choo, gone. And in October, 11 people were killed at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh during Shabbat morning services. Which, again, from what I read about it, it, it seemed highly suspicious and probably a false flag. But I don't know. And it kind of went away pretty quick, too. A lot of these stories about these various shootings... Uh, whether they were done uh, by some kind of a, a secret ops group from within the government or or maybe an MK Ultra 
mind-controlled individual, or or they were actually done by a real crazy person. Um, you know, it, it's so hard to tell now because they, they, they fake so much of this stuff. Well, they fake everything, and they lie about everything. So it's hard to tell whether or not any of this... Uh, any of these shootings were were done in the way they uh, were reported as being done, uh, and and I'm always highly skeptical. My first thought is, whenever I hear about one of these mass shootings, is that, all right, this is this is this is a, a false flag. It's a government psyop. It's a it, it may it may be a hoax. Maybe they actually went in there and killed a bunch of people, uh, and the government don't care. They 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 love going in and killing a bunch of people. It, it works great for them, but uh, on some of these, the, nobody was ki- actually killed, and some of these people were actually killed, but they uh, had done it themselves, and they blamed it on, they picked some, some poor sap to blame it on, and uh, <laughs> so <laughs> expect more of that in the coming year. Oh, uh, yeah, baby. All right, <laughs> number, f- number five here. Uh, U.S. midterms elections with Donald Trump. Who cares? Skip, bypass, Bzzz. not important. <laughs> All right, <laughs> just a waste of time and energy, and uh, don't even think about it. Number six: U.S. immigration events along the U.S.-Mexico border. Eh, caravan of immigrants. Meh. Skip, bypass. Sorry, no good. Unimportant. Number seven: K- Kavanaugh hearings. <laughs> Again, <laughs> who freaking cares? Okay, number eight, the California wildfires. Well, 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 California wildfires. <sighs> so many problems with the California wildfires. The whole par- town of Paradise, California, little town, burned to the ground. Oh, wait. But only the houses burned to the ground. The trees didn't burn to the ground. The trees were just fine. Everything other than the houses and the cars was just fine. The only things that burned to the ground and burned very rapidly in extremely high temperature was the houses and the cars. Something just wasn't right. Now... A lot of people talked about, and, and I know Hal has mentioned several times, uh, in a maybe not exactly agreeing with him manner, about the directed energy weapons that people saw being used during those. Took photos of. There's lots of photos out there of directed energy weapons being used to burn these places to the ground. Interesting. Oddly. Anyway, let's see what they have to say about it. Uh, The most populous state endured an epic year for wildfires, culminating with devastating November fires occurring simultaneously, magically, 450 miles apart. Somehow, in two different areas of the state, 450 miles apart, fires just sprang up out of nowhere. The campfire in Northern California swept through the city of Paradise, killing at least 86 people, the deadliest U.S. wildfire in a century. Nearly 14,000 homes and hundreds of businesses were destroyed. In Southern California, simultaneously, three people died and 1,500 structures were destroyed destroyed by the Woolsey Fire. Two fires and a third smaller blaze produced $9 billion dollar Initial insurance claim. Uh, debris cleanup is pegged at $3 billion. And I saw somebody posted a link in the chat today. I, I didn't have an opportunity to go to it. But uh, uh, the uh, electric company out there, who is it, Edison or PG&E? Uh, uh, one, one of those big electric companies um, that is being looked at as, a, as, a, as a, somebody to blame for these fires. Um may actually have, and it said that there was going to be murder charges filed against the company. Well, how do you, how do you do that? You got to pick somebody, right? Who you got to, 
got to pick somebody within the company. You can't actually charge uh, a company with murder. You have to charge people running it or that are working there. Uh, we're ignoring some of some of the uh, calls that they were getting about sparking wires and such. Um, but but these fires were not caused by sparking wires. You know, there there could have been some little fires caused by the sparking wires in the areas directly around them, but but they didn't cause what happened out there. There is no way in hell. Uh, this stuff was done intentionally. I don't know by who. I can't say by who. But this was no accidental natural brush fire that did this. Because from what we saw, the brush didn't even burn. <laughs> All right. At, at number nine. Number nine top story of 2018. Climate change. Yes, climate change. That that that's the uh, number nine top story of 2018. Climate change. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Worse, worsening natural disasters around the world intensified the focus on climate change. Delegates at the global summit in Poland negotiated an agreement on the next step to minimize the harm. In the United States, a government report, and you know you can trust that because it's a government report, warned of devastating impact, uh, prompting a little pushback by the Trumpster. We, we don't exactly know what happened. No, but we know what didn't happen. <laughs> Anyway, so this climate change nonsense, uh, uh, and, and of course it's not just climate change, because climate changes, it always changes, it's supposed to change. If the climate stopped changing, we'd, we'd probably all be dead, but the climate does change. But what they're saying is, is it's your fault, your fault, you are a virus on this planet, you are causing the climate to change and that's gonna kill people and it's gonna make the waters right oh wait but we've heard all this before we've heard all this for many many years now in everything that was supposed to be all the bad effects that were supposed to have occurred according to Al Gore back when he made his piece of crap movie an inconvenient truth the times for timelines for everything he said was gonna happen have come and gone, and none of the things that he said were going to happen, happened. <laughs> so so now they come out with a new report, and it, it, it's supposed to be global warming, right? It was supposed to be global warming. But since it wasn't warming, the, 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 the globe wasn't warming, they had to change it to climate change. That way you don't say, oh, well, it's not actually warming. Oh, no, but the climate's changing. Okay, when there, when did it not change? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, but they're pushing it and they're pushing it hard, and they're and they're gonna sell it to you in various through various uh, taxes or whatever, um, in, in order to, to to force it down your throat as as hard as they can. Um, and, and that's where it, really what it comes down to is is, is it just another. Uh, method of control uh, another another method to to uh, put you under their thumb a little bit harder yes Vinny climate change is real <laughs> it's just not human caused <laughs> all right in the number 10, 10 top story for 2018 according to this post from the uh, AP Khashoggi killing Really? We're talking about one guy, some some freaking journalist, uh, killed killed probably by by the Saudi Empire. Uh, yeah, and and that is a top story. The Saudis have been slaughtering the Yemenis for several years now. Tons of them, lots of them. The Jews have been wiping out the Palestinians for years now. 
Lots of them. And this, this one freaking journalist guy gets killed, and that's a top story? Give me a break. <laughs> I, I, I just, you know, it drives me nuts. These, these are the things that they want you to focus on. Don't look at any of the real stuff going on. Look at this kind of crap here. These are the top stories of the year. Oh, unbelievable. Anyway, the link will be there in, in, in the in the post-show blog tomorrow. So, uh, eh, maybe tonight. No, probably tomorrow. Uh, so, so look for that, and uh, we'll, 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 we'll get it to you. We'll get it to you. Now, a, a little better, a little better story for you. Um, and, and again, not a great story, but better than, well, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> oh, and I'll break it down as I go here. From the state. Really? That's the name of the site here? Uh, Thestate.com. Yeah, that's what it's called. Again, from the Associated Press. Jews. Yeah, I said Jews. Uh, or did I just say Israel? I, I don't recall. It comes out of my mouth and, and disappears out of my brain. That's as far as it's a, it's here, it's gone. Boom. <laughs> All right. So here's the story. Growing like a weed. A look at marijuana milestones in 2018. Marijuana milestones. Yeah, how about that? All right. It says it took less than a week for the Trump administration to kill the considerable buzz created January 1st when California's broad marijuana legalization law took effect, creating the largest legal U.S. cannabis marketplace. And it was supposed to be huge. It would have been great had that occurred. Through various means that I was interested in. However... Then, U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions rescinded the policy shielding state-licensed medical marijuana operators from federal drug prosecution. Fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> the move sent a chill through the nascent legal industry, but ultimately, it had very little impact because federal prosecutors around the country showed very little interest in going after legal operators. Sessions, a staunch asshole, I mean a marijuana opponent, later lost his job and the cannabis industry thrived in a hugely significant year for the legal pot movement in the U.S. and beyond. Give me a second to get a sip of water here. A sip of gold. Here are some of the highlights. <laughs> January 1st, California's law takes effect, allowing people 21 and older to use marijuana. Oh, hooray, thank you, State, for allowing me the permission to use a substance that grows naturally and causes nobody any harm. Thank you, thank you so much. Three days later, January 4th, Sessions rescinds that policy. Then, on January 22nd, Vermont's legislature legalizes recreational marijuana. It's the first time a state legislature, rather than the voters, approved such a law. Huh. They can do that, but they don't. In most places. Apparently, that, that's the one place. That's the first place to have done such a thing. On January 25th, U.S. health regulators approved the first prescription drug made for marijuana. The medication Epidiolex is used to treat two rare forms of epilepsy in young children. Approved by U.S. regulators, even. Imagine that! <laughs> of course, they could just... Uh, smoke the weed and, and be fine, but no, 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 no. They had to prove, uh, approve a prescription drug made 
from the marijuana. June 28th, Oklahoma becomes the 30th state to legalize medical marijuana usage. 30, 30 out of 50. That's 60% right there. That's pretty good. Of course, that's just the medical. And you have to get approved by a government-approved doctor and get a government-approved card and be tracked by the government for everything you're doing and associated with this, this devil's lettuce. And if you actually do get one of these cards and get tracked by the government and suppose you own guns in a lot of various states, you'll no longer be able to own those guns because they don't think that you can smoke a joint and still have a weapon in your possession, in your house. Because uh, it's an evil, evil substance. <laughs> then on July 19th, um, a Canadian company, Tilray Inc., is the first marijuana business to complete an IPO, uh, initial public offering, on a major U.S. stock exchange, raising $153 million as it began trading on the NASDAQ exchange. Small potatoes. Small potatoes, $153 million. But still, it, w it was being traded publicly on, on a major stock exchange. And that in itself is, is pretty big news. On August 15th, Constellation Brands Incorporated, uh, the parent company of Corona beer and other alcoholic drinks, made $4.1 billion investment in Canopy Growth Corporation, a major Canadian pot producer. Also huge. October 17. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Canada legalizes marijuana use for people 19 or older in most provinces? I thought it was Canadian-wide. I, I, I didn't realize there were certain provinces within Canada uh, that, that, that did not um, get legalized. Uh, under that that new law there, so that's uh, quite interesting. Uh, it's the, apparently it's the second country after Uruguay to legalize marijuana, and it's the and its first world nation status. Uruguay's not first world. Uh, they they look pretty modern to me. Anyway, its first world nation status adds greater credibility. <laughs> To the, to the global marijuana marketplace. Yeah, yeah, Flash, somebody, uh, Grim Nero, yeah, Rome is burning, I'm fiddling. It, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. This one was, was a, kind of a surprise because uh, we didn't really see it coming. But on Halloween, October 31st, uh, Mexico's Supreme Court rules that individuals can use marijuana under their, and get this, because you don't hear this from from a government institution, but under their right to decide their own recreation act activities. A government institution said you have a right to decide your own recreational activities? <laughs> Imagine that shit. Of course, it's still not legal down there. The, the court said it was okay. But the, 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 it's still illegal under Mexican law. They haven't passed any laws saying it's legal. Just the court said it was okay for you to determine <laughs> your, your own recreational activities. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Second World, I think that's a video game or something, Vinny. Um I don't know, uh, apparently uh, the United States used to be a, a first world, and now it's third world. At least that's what I read over the weekend. Uh, anyway, anyway, um, November 7th, voters make Michigan their first Midwestern state and 10th overall to legalize recreational marijuana usage. Missouri and Utah, also on that same day, approved medicinal marijuana. So two more on that bucket and one more in the other bucket. 
All right. Then on December 7th, getting closer to the end, to the thing here, December 7th, U.S. cigarette maker Altria, I think, I think that's the Marlboro Company, invests $2.4 billion in Canadian marijuana company Kronos Group. So you'll soon be buying your Marlboro marijuanas. Mar <laughs> Marlboro marijuanas. Oh, I can hardly not wait. Not interested. All right. December 10th, New Zealand uh, passed a law making medical marijuana widely available. The nationwide referendum on recreational pot is planned within two years. So even though New Zealand is down under, they're trying to get a little higher. <laughs> oh, God. And then on December 20th, Donald Trump, the Trumpster, Trumpy, signed into law a farm bill that removes hemp, the cannabis plant cousin to marijuana, from the list of federally controlled substances. That's right. Hemp is no longer scheduled. It is no longer a controlled substance. You can now, depending upon your state laws, grow and use hemp in any way you should desire, apparently. Somebody's going to have to test that out and let me know how it works out for them. <laughs> On Christmas Day, Thailand's legislature amends the country's drug law to allow the license to medical use of marijuana. And also on Christmas Day, Israel, Israel's parliament approves a law to permit exports of medical marijuana. I, I don't know what Israel's laws are, are on medical marijuana, but this is just to permit exports of it. Because there's money being made, and if there's money being made, Israel wants to be involved. <laughs> oh, he, he, just because you're industrialized, that doesn't make you first first world, does it, Chloe? I mean, I, I guess it depends. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, like, Argentina is industrialized. And uh, they they look a little far, a little, a little far from uh, industrial or uh, first world to me. But what do I know? I, I don't know nothing. I'm just here yapping about whatever I decide to yap about. Anyway, that's the uh, the big 2018 marijuana stories, apparently, according to thestate.com. <laughs> Again, my uh, my uh, wire is connected. If you you know you you got something that you want to call in and talk about, maybe maybe you made some New Year's resolutions, and you want to you want to talk about what your resolutions are. I, I, don't, I don't really do resolutions. Uh, I don't. I'm not a fan of resolutions. Um, back when maybe I thought about doing some resolutions in my in my younger days. Decades ago, it was stupid because you know nobody ever follows through on the resolutions. I don't say nobody, but a very rare few actually follow through on resolutions. I have decided though that there are some things I'm going to do this coming year that I, that I have not done uh, prior, um, and one of them would be to to grow a garden. It's not a resolution; it's just a concept, an idea, a plan, uh, something I I, I think I want to do. And, and I've got my yard pretty well prepared um, at this point in time. I've had a lot of work done in the yard. And um, there was, a, you know, the, 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 the woman that, that I bought the house from, uh, she had done all this goofy crap in the yard, zero escaping parts of the area, yard and planting this other stuff. And this was this big old nasty tree. That, anyway, I've had a lot of that stuff removed. And, um, and so I, I think now I could actually probably... Uh, go ahead and and um, plant a garden out there. And I've been saving seeds from various things, various fruits and or vegetables that that uh, I've eaten over the years. And and so I have those seeds, and, and I can I can plant those. Plus, I also have a uh, what do you call it? Heritage heritage uh, seed bank thing uh, that I've had for many years. That's that's been just stored in the cupboard. So I could I could do pretty good. I'm think I'm thinking uh, 
cantaloupes, uh, tomatoes. Uh, I don't have any, maybe I don't know if I have strawberry seeds out there or not. I'd like to do strawberries uh, if, if I have some seeds for that. Um, green beans and bell peppers. I have, I have a lot of bell pepper seeds that I've saved from the bell peppers I, I've, I've eaten over the years. Um, some tomato seeds that I've saved. Uh, plus, there, there, there are some in, in, in my seed vault. Um, not, nothing, nothing I don't like, of course. I, I'm not going to grow anything I don't like. So, so there'll be no asparagus. There'll be no cauliflower. <laughs> there'll be no onions. So, so the, the, but uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea, maybe, to, to do a little garden out there this year. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, it, it's a plan. It's a thought. And like I said, it, it, mostly before, because the, the yard was not really prepared for that kind of thing. But uh, I, think, I think I'm good now. I think we're good here. Um, I, I don't know what there is to say about this one, but we'll we'll give it a little shot here, um, j just because not just myself, but several others here in the chat are, are cryptocurrency fans. I, I think it's a good thing to do. We're going to talk about. So this is a year in review. Uh, 2018's top cryptocurrency stories. I, I looked through it and there was nothing really too exciting about it, but um, of course, if you recall, uh, last um, year at this point in time, Bitcoin was sitting high, way, way, way high, like $20,000, almost $20,000 per coin, per Bitcoin. And, and it's at right now, let me take a quick look, $3,700. A little over thirty-seven hundred dollars. Well, I'm not growing any asparagus for you, Chloe. Sorry, or Brussels sprouts. <laughs> you want those? You have to grow them yourself. <laughs> I don't like them. Uh, <laughs> I could try broccoli, but I, I've I've heard that's not real easy to grow, and I do like broccoli. Um, Anyway, T. Anyway, so uh, 2018 saw hundreds of billions of dollars shaved off the entire cryptocurrency market cap. Yeah, it's safe to say that 2018 was the opposite of 2017 as far as year-over-year -year cryptocurrency market price changes, in, in based upon the dollar, anyway. Um, on December 31st, 2017, the top 10 market capitalizations and prices for each coin were vastly different than they are today. The top five coins had considerably more fiat value at that time, with Bitcoin Core trading at 13170 uh, per coin, which was down a bit from its peak already at that point, well, about a week earlier it peaked. Uh, per coin, Ripple had, was at 212 Ethereum at 721, Bitcoin Cash at 2,459, and it's talk about something called Cardano, which I, I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, but anyway, so when this uh, article was produced about a week ago, Bitcoin had dropped to four thousand uh, dollars, Ripple down to thirty-eight cents, Ethereum one hundred twenty-seven dollars, Bitcoin Cash one hundred ninety-three dollars. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, apparently, the South Korean regulation throughout most of January and February, talks of digital currency regulation. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'll just, I'll just give you the link because I know a lot of you are not interested in this. And those of you that are, will actually go ahead and take the time to read it. But uh, the, these are apparently what what they consider uh, the top stories for cryptocurrency for the year on the uh, bitcoin.com website so just bear those in mind it's been a rough rough year for cryptocurrencies very rough and uh, so those people that were holding tons of money last December January yep, not there anymore it's all it's all pretty much dried up and gone dried up and gone <laughs> oh boy all right let me let me let me get down here to some of these older stories i had lined up get back to the original purpose of the show um 
stuff I had lined up for for uh, Freaker's Ball and didn't get to, which is what this is about. This is the Grim Leftover Show. That's the point of the show, to cover stories I didn't have time to get to uh, on the Freaker's Ball that I had marked that I had marked in my my read it later dealy uh, for for that. And and I I know this uh, has some people kind of excited, and it actually has me a little bit excited. Uh, not so much for the software, but for the effect it may have upon Shoutcast. And as you know, we broadcast here on Shoutcast. So, uh, in this coming year, Winamp 6, due out in 2019, aims to whip more llamas ass! Yes, indeed. If you recall, a few people that uh, used Bitcoin, I mean uh, Winamp, Bitcoin, Winamp in the past, or maybe some of you still actually using the old apps, the old, the old, the old Winamp apps. Um, you remember the, the little slogan, Winamp, it really whips the llama's ass. Anyway, <laughs> so, <coughs> it says here, you can listen to the MP3s you may have at home, but also to the cloud, to podcasts. Uh, re- replace, or rejoice, <laughs> not replace, rejoice, llama whipping fans. A new version of Winamp is set to be released in 2019, according to a Monday report by TechCrunch. And I'll, and I'll believe it really when I see it. Um, but it, it says it says it's coming. It says it's coming. Um, according to a Monday report by TechCrunch, Alexander Sabajan, a CEO of Radionomy, said that the upgrade would bring a complete listening experience. Listening experience. I can almost talk. Audio Valley, Radionomy's parent company, did not immediately respond to ARS for request, and that's where we're at on Ars Technica, ARS Technica, for comment. Uh, the Belgian company that brought, bought Winamp from AOL in January 2014, which, you see, that, that, that's, that's kind of the problem. That's, uh, that's why Winamp failed, is because they were purchased by AOL, and uh, since then just floundered but um, Winamp is directly tied in the shout cast and um, it, 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 was, it was a great broadcasting tool for Shoutcast. Um, so anyway just bear that in mind so anyway it's supposed to be coming out um, um, they don't have a release date here but uh, don't you worry I will keep you posted well, on on Winamp and when it does come out, when it's released, because um, I, I look forward to improvements in the Shoutcast broadcasting tool interface. Uh, there's various interfaces for broadcasting through Shoutcast, but um, I, I think there's a lot of good stuff that can happen there in, uh, on that on that on that track. So, hooray! Right? Winamp fans? We got Winamp fans? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. What else? Well, I'm not down to the bottom yet. It's, I got stories here that I don't, I don't really want to get to. Um,. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is probably a good one to cover. I I don't think I covered it on Freakers, and I've had it in here. Not that it's really breaking news at this point in time, uh, but we're going to share it with you anyway. It's on a website called newsworthies.com, but it actually comes from the New York Times from, on November 5th, 2018. Yeah, I don't do zucchini either. No, I'm not really a fan of zucchini either. Um, so I won't be growing any of that. But, uh, yeah. Maybe some watermelon. I don't know. I like cantaloupe. I don't know. I'm not, I, I prefer cantaloupe over most other melons. Honeydew melons are all right. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> FDA approves a new powerful new... Uh, pop- a new powerful new, a powerful new opioid, despite warnings of likely abuse. 
the FDA on Friday, which would have been sometime in November, uh, approved a new form of an extremely potent opioid to manage acute pain in adults. Weeks after the chairman of the advisory committee that reviewed it asked the agency to reject it on the grounds that it would likely be abused. And it will. But that's okay, because who runs the FDA? Big Pharma. I'm not breaking any news there. Anyway, the drug, Desuvia, is a tablet form of Sufenatil? Sufentanil? Whatever. A synthetic opioid that has been used intravenously and in epidurals uh, since the 80s. It's ten times stronger than fentanyl. Got that? What's the big one killing people out there now? Fentanyl, which is so many times stronger than whatever else was before that. But this one is ten times stronger than fentanyl. <laughs> Unbelievable. The parent drug that is often used in hospitals but is also used uh, what also is also produced illegally in forms that have caused tens of thousands of overdose deaths in recent years. Yeah. Although the FDA, uh, although although the FDA advisory committee uh, charged with evaluating the new formulation ultimately uh, recommended in a ten to three vote last month that the agency approve it. The, the panel's chairman, Dr. Rayford Brown, wrote a letter to top FDA officials afterward expressing deep concern. Ah, yeah. All right. So, uh, anyway, um, the thing is, they, they know this is going to be used in, uh, improperly and made illegally, uh, produced, you know, uh, in the black market and, and pushed out on the street and it's going to kill lots of people. They don't care. They don't care. It's not, it's not their concern. So, there's that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just I just read these stories and it's just like it, it's totally nuts, totally nuts. Um, now, all right, I, I I can I can wrap it up there there. Um, it, it's you know it is a I did I did specify a one hour show. Um, so, I, I wanted to say, Happy New Year's to everybody. Hopefully, your 2019 is terrific. I, I think it, it should probably wind up being better than, than, than 2018. Uh, 2018 was just so goofy. Uh, it, it may continue that way. I mean, as trends, trends do t tend to go, the goofiness will continue and increase as we fall into 2019. But I think somehow it'll be better. I, I don't know why. Don't, don't really ask me why. Because uh, I can't tell you. I just have a feeling that 2019 will be a superior year to 2018. So, some less of the just nonsense that's been going on uh, throughout the world. And, and I hate to say nonsense that goes on in in the news because the news is always nonsense uh, of course we know it, it's just you know corporate lame ass propaganda that's a clap um, but I, I think I think most of y'all will have a better more uh, happier year in 2019 than you had in 2018 it's eh, called a feeling you know um and uh, so I, I hope uh, I hope it goes that way anyhow, and I, and I hope Real Liberty Media continues and and, and keeps going on, uh, in in the manner it's done for 
what, 11 years now? I don't know, 12 years? How long has it been around? I don't know. A lot, quite a while. <laughs> and I, and uh, I'm glad to have you all here. I, I appreciate every each and every single one of you. Even even those of you like 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 Hansel, I, you know, I I I couldn't possibly disagree with things he says and the the way he acts more, but uh, but I still appreciate him coming around and being here. Um, we had some interesting stuff this year, you know, art 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 underground. You, you he was here for like two weeks broadcasting, and then he got upset and left. He popped in a couple of times this morning. I think it's probably because he was trying to get on the IRC, and the way I set his IRC up was to automatically join uh, Freenode and Real Liberty Media Chat. Because <laughs> he popped in and immediately left twice. <laughs> so, but <laughs> but if you're out there, Art, hey man, no harm, no foul. You, you're still all right in my, in my book. Um, yeah. So uh, anyway, I think that's gonna that's gonna do it. Um, I, I do believe that uh, 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 Flash somebody will be on tomorrow with his program in a perfect world at, at his normal time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. And then I, I'll, um, not I, uh, Grammy sh will be back, she said, on Wednesday. So her Wednesday and Friday show at 7 p.m. Eastern here, here on Real Liberty Media. The Grammy's rocket chair should be back in action. It's normal thing. We've missed it for a week now, so uh, we'll be glad to have that back. Uh, and then uh, myself and the Moose Girl, um, we'll be back to normal, normal Freakers Ball shows, <laughs> as normal as they get. But uh, since you know, last week was uh, the Christmas show, and then this week was the New Year's predictions show, uh, so next week it'll be just a normal show, no, no, no special theme. <laughs> For that, uh, and then of course, uh, um, uh, Flash again. Oh wait, Flash is also going to be here on Thursday. I almost forgot. Flash has a brand new show on Thursday, and it's called Twenty Percent Off. Uh, don't miss it. Twenty percent off uh, on on uh, on Thursday. I forget the exact time. Look at the schedule. And uh, yeah, Flash. Uh, Flash has three shows now. He is a he's a freaking trooper, man. Flash has three shows. I have three shows. Grammy, well, I have, well, half half of one and two and a half shows, because I, I do half of Freakers Ball, then I do the blues show, which is just playing music. It's not really talking, and then I, then I do this show, and and this this show may increase to two hours at some point. I haven't decided yet, um, but you know, eh, well, it, well, if it does, we'll get there when we get there. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, um, so and so Flash has the Dork Table Saturdays and, and In a Perfect World on Tuesdays and then 20% off on Thursdays. So, that. And then Grammy does does two two-hour nights of the same show, Grammy's Rocket Chair, Wednesday and Friday. And uh, Hal Anthony does his two-hour show on, on Sunday afternoon uh, behind the woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop-ass. So, that, that's it. That's what's going on right now on, on Real Liberty Media. If anybody else wants to do a show, let me know. I'll set you up. I'll get you going. Uh, you, you know, even if you just want to come on and broadcast at random times when there's not a live show on, that's fine, too. I, I could get you going for that. Uh, that. That's really, you know, we can't. you won't be on the schedule if you're just going to do random times, but that's cool. Um, don't give me any central crap, Vinny. <laughs> Vinny stuck in this central time zone. You know, I, I could give you mountain times, but we, we base everything on Eastern uh, Eastern time. And I don't say Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time because it's just Eastern time. When they change, we change, so it's Eastern time. Anyway. <laughs> oh, that's right. Radio writing, I almost forgot. Vinny's new show starts for this coming Friday. Radio, radio writing series, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, so... Uh, He'll be back. The Ponder Gander himself. The Connector of Voices. Fridays at RLM Radio. All right. I think I've yammered on enough. Y'all have yourselves a great New Year's Eve, great New Year's Day, and great next year. Uh, thank y'all. Peace. <laughs>